All right, so first off, I would like to point out that this is weird. I understand there's extra people here and then also you're not used to seeing my face. Lots of changes are gonna come to the channel. This was the same thing I was making an announcement about and one of those things being a podcast I'm now working on, which includes these two motherfuckers or motherfuckers, depending on where they are in relation to where I am. I so the, the name still applies. Very much. With that being said, welcome to GXP. This is gonna be the podcast that centers around some music stuff, some video game stuff, and anything else that random I decide to throw out that these two will just pick up on from there. Also, for the sake of making things easier on everybody and for the fact of like getting general reach, the podcast itself will be hosted for now. My move as time goes on Chris's channel, aka KXA Prime. And then as we go from there, we'll probably either double host or move it move as accordingly it just depends on how things go and how this feels out for us yeah so with that being said for those who are not used to you know us i'm ghost i've been hosting this channel for quite a bit now in terms of the melody ghost channel because again and then also you're used to seeing his face before mine's that being chris What's good? It's and me. <laughs> CJ. Yeah, best I'm friend here. for the longest. I'm just here. He's just in the stands. I'm here for a fun time. <laughs> and with that being said, let's actually I kick off I got no GX. socials aside from Instagram. <laughs> and y'all ain't finding that shit unless you reverse image search, then I'm fucked. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Pretty much. And with that... And with that being said, let's actually kick into the first thing we we're talking about, and that would be our Spotify raps. I was kind of interested in talking about a bit of music, and I wasn't sure exactly what to talk about. So since the raps came out, we might as well start with that. And who wants to do theirs first? I wonder. I, w- I wonder. Wonder who's on my uh, Spotify rap. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, right. the people on my wall aren't on my Spotify rap. Aside from, wait, wait, gotta, gotta point the right way. Yeah, those guys. <laughs> Actually, you know what? You know what? You know what? As host privileges, I decide I'm gonna decide CJ goes first. Damn. All right, gotcha. <laughs> Let me post my shit. Oh, yeah, we could post it in the the chat thingy in the in the voice chat channel. True. True. I'll Give post mine there. Are we just posting everything we have on it, or? I'm yes. just posting like the full well, like page. Yeah, I posted up. the genres and like the full page. Okay, okay. So burger and page. Yes. Burger. What? Well, you got a burger. I got a fucking sandwich. Yeah, this motherfucker got the white bread. I don't even think I I didn't save my burger. Hold on. You guys could since CJ starting, you can start with yours. I'm gonna open yeah. the chat up so they can see your burger. Um mine is pretty all over the place because I was kind of all over the place this year. Um WWE being number two kind of just happened with the fact that I got fully back into wrestling and I realized holy shit, these are some bops. Drew McIntyre's theme goes fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> Why did they go so stupid with all these themes? Yeah, even the new ones. But Machine Girl I saw in concert last year, and I've been in love with them ever since. Because one, they make exactly my favorite kind of music, which is just video game music. On top of just punk and electronic it's literally everything i like in one big little fucked up ball of just flesh (laughs) (laughs) and yeah that concert was a core memory that's what that's that's where that poster is from oh yeah i gotta get it i gotta get it signed eventually but next time (laughs) um number three is this guy named mac the shonen who i met at anime nyc last year and yeah makes good shit very big influence from like people like mf doom new jabez um just really good lo-fi hip-hop 
very 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 small well, that, like I, I think he you know what? let me let me pull up the numbers i, I love this man but i'm, I'm just gonna give an example <laughs> and wombas sponsor not sponsor type beat <laughs> nah they, they, this is sponsored for me i'm not getting paid <laughs> shit but i want to help him he, and out he of the heart on sponsored. twitch too okay Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, he only has 188 monthly listeners. Oh, so mad, so mad indie. Yes, very much so. I met him. I met him at one of the anime NYC after parties. Um, I, it was like a big fucking rave, and I just ended up getting lumped in with a bunch of Bleach cosplayers, and he was one of them. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. All cool people. Well, gotta be if it jumped your Spotify that quickly. Yes. Yes. And Lewis Cole, I think he was on my raft last year, and if not, I definitely brought him up. But I remember the name being mentioned last year. Yeah, but he is easily one of my biggest influences because he's, like, funny but depressing as fuck at the same time. Ah, uh, we like those. <laughs> While also being funky as hell. That is the funkiest white boy I've ever seen. <laughs> Play he that is... funky music, white boy. <laughs> he is one of the right. best drummers I've ever seen that's not in, like, a fucking, like, deathcore metal band where they're just going, like, <laughs> for, like, an entire seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and Omar Apollo. This album, that is all. That, that, that that's all that's need to be said <laughs> and i've got another one of his on the way <laughs> okay um i guess i'll go next for the base uh for yeah this base thing before we get to the sandwiches the sammies so first up we have doja i have been listening to doja since amala really and up and down history of like her music and stuff like that but at the same time typically i consider it pretty pretty good so like i it just continued off and then the new album got dropped and yeah i ended up liking scar i, I, I ended up liking i don't Scarlet think it's considered well. nostalgia yet but it's definitely gonna be nostalgia eventually yeah it's gonna be uh, it's definitely gonna be nostalgia just because i've been listening to her for so long and that even goes back to like when she dropped so high which if like that like you know that's early like not early, early, but definitely early. Then we go to Ash Deco, which I'm gonna be honest, even surprised me how big I ended up getting into them. <laughs> because like with Nico, I like her sound and I like the fact that she like pulls from so much, but it always has like this morbid, like morbid and aggressive instrumentation the lyric content like being on topic while at the same time having some stuff like you yeah. know literally her the her main track worms or like the whole idea is like talking about worms literally in your head while also applying to other yeah. stuff Good yeah brain, so like right? <laughs> so like there's so much that goes into that and then like the new concept project that she did like i said amazing uh, in my personal opinion like I wouldn't be surprised if Nico ended up being like no like the number one next year. To be to be honest, uh, Kendrick, oh, you're making I a really, prediction. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's my prediction. Um, if it's not gonna be her, it's gonna be someone I'm gonna get to in a bit. Um, Kendrick, it's Kendrick. I was gonna say you don't yeah. you don't need to elaborate yeah. on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like wait, wait, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> got, like got, we got T Pab and Dam and Mr. Morale right there. To <laughs> be a, honest, the, the summoning circle. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, Rich Spirit alone could have got them there. So like, yeah, yeah. that that out. Yeah, Kendrick, Kendrick, it, no said. Um, Paris Paloma. I'm pretty sure neither of you two have heard of her. <laughs> yeah, and no. you'd be right. Kind of indie artist, like folk kind of sound. Like there's Catholic inspired in instrumentation while also having its own like different riff to it, and then <laughs> it's attacking one of the a few things that Catholics did right. <laughs> 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 but, to, 
attacking different stuff like you know like feminine rage and like society and stuff like that basically all of these very strong topics with a very powerful voice behind it with a very soft and nice sound to it and then it culminates into just like this really good and pleasant thing to listen to like do they um, have organs though close <laughs> there is some stuff that like like i said there's some you can tell it's church inspired in some ways but like it doesn't lean too hard on it yeah, you can just tell that they they probably unwillingly stayed t and spent their time in the choir. <laughs> so, and then after that is Florence and the Machine. Anyone who knows me, anyone who knows this ghost, knows that I am a Florence fan. I'm near a super very fan. much so. <laughs> yeah, very much so. And as far as like Florence, it's like seriously like they're one of the most powerful voices i've ever heard and i have to because surprisingly haven't been to a concert yet have to go to one because that like i was gonna her... say how many how many albums do you think she has left in the tank to be honest i can see her either going forever or stopping yet two more mm. It's either going to be one of those two because she seems to be one of those creatives that doesn't like run out of creativity. And like it's weird because like every single project, like this latest project is possibly, and that's coming from like, like I said, if you know anything about Florence, that's like wild to say, but you also understand possibly the biggest sound she has created to this date. Mm -hmm. And it's wild to me that like it sounds like there is a orchestra level instrumentation behind her on most tracks so yeah, and like again started. her voice can you know carry that as well so it becomes one of those things where it's like she ended up number five but like realistically if it wasn't for the fact that i had a couple singles on repeat from some of the other artists i feel like she would have been like number three uh so like makes sense so that's where it's one of those things where it's like Paris and Florence, I definitely can also see rising up, um, depending on what comes out next year. Cause like, I know they barely beat out some other stuff that like was really, there was like, there was a lot of game changing sounds for me this year. And Chris, uh, go to you. Oh boy. My most, oh boy. not shocking, but shocking list. I mean, to be honest, I, if you would have told me like last year that Lil Yachty would have been my number one, I don't know. I don't. I would have not seen that. But this man dropped a goat, the goaded album of the year at the beginning of the year, and it stayed in rotation. Yeah, like, like it's I, I, still I didn't peak even music. To it, like super, super often, but I can still admit that she was a masterpiece. Yeah, I haven't finished it, but it's pretty solid, and it's it's strange because to be honest personally it doesn't sound like a yachty project it does not no it yeah, this man exactly stepped out of his so box good. this man went full alternative and it worked out for the best <laughs> like like damn the futures and then the, yeah nah that was number one i think a lot of like if not the whole album was on repeat for like the whole year i tossed every song in that bitch on a playlist Fair. Definitely fair. Oh, yeah. And then two, Idol. I don't I don't need to elaborate on that one. Gee, I, I wonder why. Still I wonder mad why. at you about this. Still mad at you about this. Totally bad. Would you like to elaborate? <laughs> so I got I this is all I'm, their domain. I'm not a K pop guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm an old K pop fan and old it the only shit I listen to is people, twice. Because some people will still outrank me in terms of that. But, like, I'm from the 21 BTS era when those two were, like, the biggest two. So, like, <laughs> I took a break after 21 broke up because sadness, mm -hmm. actively. And then after that, I didn't come back until this one introduced me to Blackpink and Idol. And then it became a situation of like, oh, okay, yeah, this is hidden. And now I'm down the rabbit hole too, which is like, they, they barely got beat out too, because like, they, you know, the Spotify organizes your songs by like how much you listen to each yeah. individual song. I saw that Sculpture was literally 
right under a Florence song, and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, wow, it that's a lot of listens. <laughs> Idol literally, a couple more listens, Idol could have been my five instead of Florence, and that's wild. Yeah, yeah I'm like the... For ghosts, I'm like the the oldest cartoons with the big hook off stage, just bringing them back <laughs> yeah. in. It was unintentional, but I'm not mad at myself for doing I it. I almost got into the rabbit hole, but I climbed I climbed my way out. <laughs> you felt yourself going into the quicksand. You're like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> yeah, not like this, not like this. Then my number three is BB, which is it's more. It was like a whole year sort of thing because I. I listened to a lot of her album that she released at the end of last year, so it bled into 2023. So I, I don't know if it's fair to say that, but I, it's it was like at the end of last year, so it's still technically this year music. So I never know how Spotify counts December, because I wonder if December is yeah. going to have like a I was going to say, I'm pretty on... sure December always counts for next year. Okay, then yeah, that's that's exactly where I started listening to like BB Heavy from that whole project, and then the two songs she released like earlier like two months ago and then their recent one with becky g so she's just climbed their way at the middle right at three and then four jid i don't i don't it's like it's almost like close to kind of like saying kendrick it doesn't really need an explanation Good uh, i was music. gonna say especially now after the never story 2 actually got some proper eyes on him yeah. oh yeah oh yeah for it's sure it's weird because like it's it's funny because when you think about it, I could genuinely argue that the Jid project was possibly contender for album of the year. Oh yeah, for sure. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Like, like the range on that album. Yeah, it's crazy too, because like, there's also just some cuts on that album where I'm like, I definitely, if Jid took that route and only that route, it could like, elevate even more than it even more so but there's also yeah you say that about another cut which is entirely different because oh, absolutely there's so many lanes that could be picked from here and i'm wondering where they go next because the next album from this i feel like it's gonna tell a lot of where jid goes as an artist i could oh, be wrong yeah. though it's like on this album alone you go from like the round sound to a song like cody blue and it's just like whoa what <laughs> <laughs> and i still think my is there two different two different vibes my definite picks for like that particular album has to be like i want to say crack sandwich and then you have like can't make you change like those <laughs> two like dude from like who hard knew, rap to r and that a crack sandwich would go so crazy facts <laughs> facts <laughs> And then five is the most surprising on my list. I didn't think Travis would sneak his way onto my top five, but I, I don't know. The, the album was, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. And then on repeat listen, some of those songs just go crazy. I use it for a lot of like hype myself up shit. And then there's also some vibes on there, but it's mostly a lot of hype up shit. Yeah. The good shit. The good shit. I still think with Travis as well one of those things is like i can definitely see a case of okay so travis is always good in his lane and stuff but like it's weird because his albums are like i can tell his albums are like very good but like there's always that right barrier for me between those albums and birds and i want to see if he can ever pass uh, birds for me yeah that makes sense oh yeah because my sure. bird because birds to me is like how some people feel about rodeo so like <laughs> yeah That'd be now we my top five. Now to the sandwiches. The sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the original order, that would be CJ. Yeah. Discuss this and burger. I just want to <laughs> circle back to what we were talking about earlier when it comes to like influences and stuff. Uh -huh. I feel like I feel like a perfect like recipe to get a top artist for you is literally just like mixing a bunch of shit that you already liked into one. Like oh, I mentioned yeah. with Machine Girl. Yeah. But, like I feel like that's a fucking cheat code. Cause like in the case of Omar Apollo, there's like a lot of fucking there's a lot of like Prince influence, which is another yeah. one of my favorites. Like he's probably and Prince is probably gonna be on my top five from la for next year because, um, he well he posthumously dropped a remaster of one of his albums with the new power gener generation, 
Uh-huh. And oh yeah, that I heard shit, about that. My mom yeah, it's that. called it's called Diamonds and Pearls. Like it was already one of my favorites, but that shit added like four extra discs. On oh top my of that god, shit. bro! Like, hold on, let me let me check how long it is. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Put it in the three. Like hour it's got album? take twos, it's got demos, it's got fucking everything. Like and like all alternate versions and stuff. With, so it's just all the same good shit, just all in different flavors. Damn! It's fucking amazing. Oh but yeah, God. let me let me fact check myself. Yeah, it's six hours and thirty minutes oh of my God. content. Six hours? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> okay, okay. And I'm I undershot it ridiculous. when it comes to the disc too. There's seven discs. I'm not gonna say ridiculous because I know it pits, but that's a lot of music. Yeah, I was gonna say like that's always just been a Prince move, but like. Mm -hmm. It's funny that they're keeping that reputation up while he's still fucking gone. <laughs> they're like, we yeah, know how uh, we would have dropped it. We're gonna drop it the yeah. same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty. Right, that's pretty sick. Moving back to the sandwich. The sandwich. Um, rap, like I said earlier before we started recording, um, mm -hmm. it makes sense for it to still be there, just because there's a lot of shit that I listen to that even though it's not like normal ass rap. It still falls under the like big ass rap umbrella. The riddity riddity rhymes. <laughs> yeah, like half of the shit that I listen to is like R and B beats, but with rap over it, so it's still <laughs> yeah. considered rap. That's why fucking indie soul is right there. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but just because there's more stuff under the rap umbrella, that's the biggest one aside from rock, which, uh, like, uh, I was thinking about it earlier when you guys were talking about like top albums for this year. Uh -huh. Like, I, I just spent this year going back to a lot of shit. Oh, yeah, same. Not really listening to current stuff. Like, uh, um, like I said with Prince, fucking Jimi I, Hendrix. I ended um, up with a lot, a lot of, of pop current punk stuff. And just punk in general. Like, I fucking love suicidal tendencies. That's that's a crazy sentence <laughs> that's, out of context. Yeah, out of context. I fucking love suicidal tendencies, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, agreed. Same. <laughs> that's a... That's a wild statement. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to take that out of context. <laughs> it's worth yeah. it. I oh, love yeah, that sure. band, bro. I, I should have saw them live this year, but I didn't have money. <laughs> I felt that. And when it comes to Japanese VGM, um, most of that's probably there because I, I listen to the Street Fighter 3 and 4 soundtrack a lot. <laughs> Yeah, Third Strike definitely gets played. I'm surprised the Japanese video game music isn't up there for me. Yeah. And pop is also up there just because, again, same thing as rap, especially since rap is the new pop. Big ass umbrella. Pop is uh, the fucking hugest umbrella, so like, yeah. it just catches me on the fucking, on the exceptions rather oh, than Oh, you thought just... you wasn't listening to pop? <laughs> yeah. <You> thought... <laughs> <laughs> Which don't get me wrong, I fucking love pop, but I definitely did not listen to that much of it this year. Like I've got yeah. my I've got my playlist separated into each genres, and aside from like my crying at three a.m. jazz playlist, uh -huh. that probably gets the least use. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. Okay, so like with me, rap is up there because like some of the people I mentioned earlier, you have Jid, Doja, Kendrick. That that just kind of ended up that way. And then, like I said, stuff gets, because what we said earlier with stuff gets from rap, is kind of rap pop. Yeah, like, crossover. like with yeah. Doja, like she's technically considered rap, but she's also considered pop. So that's why they're both fucking huge there. Yeah, yeah. and I noticed, I feel, I feel like they chose the sandwiches based off of how much of the particular gaps you have in between what you were listening to. And since yeah. if you would like look at my slice, like rap and pop are pretty big. They're pretty massive. And everything else just bushes at the bottom <laughs> yeah um you have alternative rock r and um that to be honest with you that's georgia smith SZA, rihanna like SZA is considered alt yeah, um kind of if you listen to SZA deep cuts it can get turned to alt r and i was gonna say because the fucking the the title of alt is just fucking worn out for me like it used Whoa. to mean like shit that just doesn't get plays, but now Billie Eilish is considered alt. Like half of the shit on the radio is considered well, alt. Like alt now is how do I? 
Same okay, with we're gonna get to a whole different tangent about subgenres. Like gorillas, oh. I, I love gorillas, but it's it's too, too mainstream to be fucking indie at this point. <laughs> All to indie don't refer to like what they are anymore in the traditional yeah, sense. It's, it's the more sound. of a sound. Like they trying to emulate so, like a fucking garage like sound. Because I will still sound. Because I will still say this, and this is probably a wild take to have. And the reason why I think Billy or something like that is considered all also aren't all R and B like. Again, like, cause Billy's actually considered alt pop, so that she <laughs> she contributes to my pop section a bit more. Um, but cause I do, I'm also heavy on Billy. I go into that, and also, yeah, that that glorious that, woman back there. That woman. <laughs> Good old yes. Kate. Um. <laughs> so like, when it comes to that, it's like they, they're most talk about the sound, but like. There is a, another couple factors to it, because, like, I think also a big contributing factor in the fact that, like, he's one of the people, like, I know there's only five, so it's hard for everyone to show up, but, like, I also listened to a lot of Isaiah Rashad this year. Mm. So. That would think, do it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the all R&B is there. Okay. Modern rock. Um, <laughs> I, I want to know. Probably gonna be, that's probably going to be in the top of my fucking picks next year. <laughs> I never got out that of my middle punk school. Rock. I never got out of my middle school phase, and that's why that's there. <laughs> it's just got it. That. Understandable. So, I listen to a lot of. I'm just now getting back into the phase. I, I, I'm I'm out here getting caught unironically listening to fucking Limp Bizkit now. <laughs> um, yeah. a lot of stuff that I was listening yeah. to was like, I want to say three days grace and you know stuff like that finger 11 on that, on that fucking smackdown versus raw 2007 core i see you yes yes right, 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 <laughs> oh right. my god what a perfect description <laughs> what that popped over <laughs> your face bro <laughs> no yeah. okay so like and then the one i actually have to explain alt z so <laughs> Yeah, I don't know yeah, what that is. Just... That hurts my brain. I okay, mean, it's, so... it's pretty self-explanatory once they actually say it. Yeah, so Alt-Z is a genre of music that blends elements of pop, electronic, and alternative music. It features catchy hooks, introspective lyrics, and a unique sound that sets it apart from mainstream pop. Uh, artists that usually fall under this, Melanie Martinez, you have <laughs> Ash and Eco, Noah Cyrus, who I also listen to. And Renee, Emma, MXM Tune, love her. She's apparently Alt Z as well. But so yeah, like, so the genre name is basically just what some fucking record execs probably were like. Whoa, what, 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 what did them, 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 them newfangled Zoomers listen to? What are them Gen Z like? Because <laughs> like it's weird. Because bedroom pop. Because you know, if if you haven't noticed, bedroom pop kind of like fizzled somewhat. Yeah. Bedroom pop, those artists when they got popular, so they were able to get a production team behind them, kind of yeah, slowly so now became just normal pop and all yeah. yeah. So like it still has the bedroom pop core, but it became it has production behind it, so it's not quite bedroom pop. So that's where a lot of they they them sit. And it, the only weird at people about it would be like the fact that it's weird to me to consider Nico. And Noah Cyrus to be in the same subgenre, but like, I don't know. But like I said, it's a broad ass term. It's the fucking the Boomhauer record execs. <laughs> so I th that would be my sandwich. But like, to be honest, Alt Z being kind of small is like wild to me. But then I realized that a lot of those artists that I listen to are very spread out amongst things, with the exception of Ash. Yeah. I feel like my sandwich just got cheated. I'm not gonna lie, cause like I still don't get why they. I don't. I don't go Dude, why they say, separate it, fucking, bro. They they definitely still consider little yachty rap. That, that that they're probably functioning on Grammy logic with fucking like Igor being put in the rap category. Oh my like, nah, god, that shit's bro. just motivated now. That yeah, like, black that was a rap Pink Floyd album. That was not a rap album. Yeah, they're like b black rap. <laughs> Cause it's like, gotta have bars. 
<laughs> and then the crazy part about it is the rap section being so huge. I feel like that's even as I feel like that's bigger than the ones on our two sandwiches. That that. Yeah. I, f I feel like because a lot of K-pop has a rap in it by yeah, default. Yeah, that's another so, thing. So literally, the the top three of mine are like, literally you can't all. Understand what the bars are, but that doesn't mean they're not spitting bars. <laughs> yeah, and then like, uh, then. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what the middle of the the burgers means. Yeah, I don't. It. I, who knows? I, I just I, realized I can't... you got an everything bagel, lucky, lucky motherfucker. Yeah, look at them spices on it. But yeah, no. I, then I there's want some fucking poppy seeds, bro. <laughs> got that zesty bread. But yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna count K-pop and K-pop girl groups because I don't know why they separate it, bro. Just keep. Yeah, like, Keep there's only together. so many differences be between the fucking boy and girl groups. Like, the Actually, only... I'm... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I, I wasn't real. I was kind of just spouting shit. I'll keep it real with you, bro. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, the only thing about that is that, like, I'm kind of glad that K-pop didn't end up on my sandwich because of that. Because then minds would have been split between K-pop, K-pop girl group, and K-pop boy group. Because I still listen to BTS kind of frequently. So, like, yeah. it would have just been three sections taken up by three different things that don't need to be separated. I'm genuinely <laughs> shocked K-pop boy groups isn't on there. Because I, I listened to a lot of Stray Kids this year. So, like, that would have been literally four-fifths of my sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, it doesn't get any better. Because like... after K-pop, it goes to pop. So, like... Yeah. <laughs> Like, you deadass got hit with the fucking oops, all pop. Oh, oops. And then at the end, it's just indie hip hop. The hippity hops. The hippity hoppities. Hip which, I like, JID is artists. still probably considered it fucking indie. No. I, I Like, I know not actually. <laughs> I'm talking from Spotify's point of from view. From Spotify's right now. Pro perspective. I like, think they even only though he blew the fuck up. They're still probably like, nah, bro. You still got that underground influence. You still, you're out. still being underground. Like fucking Vince Staples is still <laughs> under the indie fucking thing. I can believe Vince quicker. Hear me out. A and Denzel Curry with, too. A collab with Imagine Dragons. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's different. I feel like once something like that happens, like you are no. At least with Vince. Like, he doesn't do shit like that. He'll he'll just say, nah, fuck you. I'm not doing a pop record. <laughs> I, even No, it's not even that. It's like, how, how do I put it? With Vince, I can still argue. I can still... Vince is amazing. Preface. Because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not dissing or anything. Yeah, like, yeah. I can still argue that I could go to certain people and be like, do you know Vince Staples? And they'll be like, I don't listen to him. I don't think I can do the same with Jit anymore. Yeah, because they'll, they'll at least know about him. Yeah. You mean that dude that's that, cool, Jay Cole? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think. I you think talking about is, one of them Dreamville fellas? If, if he's not, like, on the. If he's not on the cusp oh my, of not being okay. in that conversation. Of uh, not I, being in that conversation no more, he's right here of being out of it. I just caught. I, I just compared their fucking numbers. Yeah, Vince only has 4 million. Jid has fucking 23 million. Yeah. This, they was like, I can casually go, like, don't get me wrong, they both have their fans, and they are both amazing, but I could casually go up to someone who's, like, randomly on League, and they're listening to Jid. Yeah. <laughs> I think, unironically, the, the thing that gets the indie hip-hop is probably BB, I'm not gonna lie, because from Korea yeah, standard, she is very underground compared to all the other stars. I think the only indie hip-hop person I listen to directly if you want to count it is maybe Brian if you still count him as indie I think he's I'm, still... I'm honestly surprised that I don't have indie hip-hop <laughs> I think Brian's still under still like under that label because he's definitely like not like that major like major spot yet <laughs> I feel like a lot of people under 88 are still under that indie label. Yeah. Even though 88 Rising is fucking huge. Yeah. You can't get more huge than producing a fucking soundtrack for an MCU movie. Like, yeah, oh, exactly. Like, with fucking Disney. <laughs> we're gonna talk about... Granted, talk about Disney's that. falling off at a rapid pace. But still, <laughs> it's fucking Disney. <laughs> we're gonna talk about 
88. Man, I y'all said this is a casual, like offhanded comment, and then I ended up down a rabbit hole I did not ask for <laughs> with Atarashi Gako. Oh, uh, you're, you're welcome. Bro, you're, I am. You're bro. welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Bro, they that, were just they were just over in fucking Mexico being ambassadors. I fucking love those. I guys. saw and that. Then, I saw and then y'all made it worse because I think y'all recommended by far the best songs to recommend for me for it. Cause Tokyo Calling is amazing. That yeah. song is cra yeah. that dance is crazy. I gotta see that. Yeah, dance their choreography song. is the best part. It's so good. Like, you know a dance is good when it looks like it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that shit looks like yeah. it hurts. I want to yeah. try it. I want to break my fucking neck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. like, uh, in terms of uh, the genres and stuff this year, um, I think it's been. I will say this: like, my I've heard people talk about the rap wasn't particularly accurate. I think mine was pretty accurate. It's just like one of those things where, like, again, I have a very weird relationship with rap right now. So, like, cause like. I was so gonna I'm say, are, are we surprised. still in the same boat where like we still like it, but we don't listen to it as much, kind of I mean, like that? Yeah, I'm in that boat. If I'm listening to a lot of rap, it means I'm sad. So like, whenever I see a lot of rap in my thing, it's like, You're like, damn, I was depressed. Holy shit! It's like, oh, it's like I needed to, I did, I had a moment where I needed to get it together. Apparently, <laughs> and pop is like the opposite. So like, yeah. like the sadder, the, basically the sadder the song gets, the happier I am. The happier the song gets, I'm depressed. <laughs> so like, it, gotcha. it's one so of those you things. function in the reverse of me. Like the sadder the song, the sadder I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, like it, it, if you, <laughs> if you catch me listening to Ocean Eyes by Billy, that is like I'm having oh, an yeah, amazing no, day. Oh yeah, no, that's a fucking crying song and a half. Oh yeah. I have an, I'm like I'm having an amazing day. I just want a belt for no reason. <laughs> like that's that, that's where I'm at. But like if I'm listening to like um <laughs> if I'm listening to like Young Thug or something like no no cap I'm probably yeah, having a terrible Thug day. makes you sad. Does it just make you think about I... that he got locked up? <laughs> it's like no, Ghost it's uses the the upbeat music to like jumpstart the happiness, trying to get that upbeat <laughs> rise. And, I'm, and me being standard and happy counteracts the, the sad song so much that I can just vibe. So it's like, that's where it's at. Also, I, f I found all my Spotify raps. Oh, okay. I'm going to post them. Uh, I'm fine with being the test subject. The test subject. We are definitely having a... Now, we, I had an idea where like... Yeah, I got go 2018 the... to now. That's fucking wild. <laughs> we are definitely picking, grabbing some of these and going through this stuff later. Just doing like the the rap catch ups. Yeah, the, the rap catch up. I'm pretty sure I probably yeah, have like, mine in my photo book, like somewhere from last year at some point. Yeah. So um, now that we finish that out, there's gonna be something else that I'm gonna do on occasion. That's basically like. I already have all my stuff here, but basically this is going to be the off hand section where I'm basically like, okay, I'm going to present some stuff that I either know about or just like, just want to talk about it. And we just like use that to finish out. And first, like, oh, this yeah. is kind of, this is kind of insane. So like, I want to get into kind of like somewhat the state of gaming. I want to touch into that because that's going to lead into like oh, don't, next Don't even get me next week. started on that. That's gonna lead. This is gonna lead into next week's Aside thing. Aside from Fortnite, fuck y'all. <laughs> Everyone else can suck a dick about Fortnite. <laughs> indie devs are where it's at. I think indie devs, fighting games, Bitch! Fortnite. Okay. Yeah. I think indie games, fighting games, and Fortnite are doing amazing right now. I think everything yes. else is kind of like yes. Everything else is actually no. Off, especially I think they're shooters. Bad. I think AAA is just having issues at the moment. Cause even with something that's like shooters, I say like for example, I'm a for just giving context, I'm a big Apex player. Mm -hmm. Like I I play I have thousands of hours on Apex at this point. I think somewhere around like eight or nine or some shit. God damn. So like, with that being said, I think Apex is in a glorious state besides ranked. Which my tangent about next week and like what I'm setting up as the topic for next week is that. I think competitive gaming is killing gaming. Yeah, 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would not argue that. Just look like all you need to do is just look at how many investors are pulling out of esports because they realize, oh, bro, Overwatch League is dead. A, maybe this isn't financially viable. Who would have thought that having a bunch of guys setting out a fucking keyboard, like, well, bro, I think. I think esports could have worked, but I think the function of it needs to be different. But yeah, that's no, a whole they didn't. Thing. They didn't prioritize the right games. They did it all like, wrong. Like honestly, if if they would have prioritized the right shit, they would have seen how much of a fucking like overlap there is between like people who like fighting games and people who like UFC, wrestling, yeah. shit like that. They just like seeing two people who actually have skills go against put each those other. skills to the test next to each other. And strapped and a rocket to that shit. <laughs> I think to be and like I said, this is gonna lead into some other stuff that I was thinking about, but I think what would save it, ironically enough, is if they take a wrestling route. Pro yes. wrestling theatrics in competitive gaming yeah, like, will actually you, will actually change it. You Gaming's don't need to look nice, any speedy. farther than grassroots FGC. Like all over the. Oh buttons. my god! Like, yeah, low tier sh- god has literally ascended the fighting game community because of how much of a fucking villain he was. You don't have to me. like him, but that man ascended like grassroots. Like, bro, the the like no way fucking knows who Faker really is. No. The only like, reason need... I know that motherfucker is because he's on the Game Awards esports fucking thing every, every year. Single year. <laughs> You see him in every world's handle. animation with the dope song attached to it. <laughs> yeah. Faker had a whole baby face story that went on with him. It's a whole thing. Like, there's a whole documentary about that particularly. Yeah, like, don't get me like, wrong. I respect the fact <laughs> that he was on there every single year, but still, it's just funny. <laughs> but, like, I think, yeah, if they played more into, like, the wrestling theatrics aspect of, like, these are our baby faces, these are our wild card, our heels, and stuff I was gonna like say, that. Just Even let Disney, people be like, unfiltered. Make it the Even fucking the attitude things. era of esports. Have people get called <laughs> called slurs on stage. I don't know about that. One. <laughs> I think we gonna have to do something about that in post. <laughs> but I mean, more like um, just for, le- for legal you, reasons. I am completely joking. If we're gonna do, if we're gonna all do, jokes, if we're gonna do pr- production value stuff because production values is like part of what happened because that's what was draining a lot of the money. If we're yeah. talking about that, I think the production value should have went into stuff like you know people themes and stuff like that make these players seem larger than life so we yes. can actually make these players seem larger than life so we can actually promote them and then the sponsors would or, make sense or even still getting people who are just recognizable to play their fucking games it, oh, it yeah. does wonders like bro my like i can't name a single fucking like siege player but like that invitational that they did at PAX one year, where it was like Russian Badger and a bunch of streamers. Oh yeah, I remember that. Holy like that was fucking hilarious to watch. Like that was, was that's what esports should be like. They should fucking invest games. in getting people to fucking actually play their games instead of just trying to get say, like people who have no fucking charisma. I'm pretty sure yeah, Fortnite just... even did the same thing at one time for one of its tournaments. They had like pro players team up with like a celebrity. And they just had yeah. a whole bunch of teams just like that running duos. And I'm like, yo, this is dope. And if anybody knows the power of fucking IPs and celebrities, it's Epic Games. Overwatch is getting smarter. And I will say it is, Overwatch is getting kind of smarter about it. Because, like, the Seraphim thing was a, I like, a... Oh, that banged. In that, yes. direction. that banged. And like, like, I fucking that's... despise Overwatch. Like, for context, I had a crippling Overwatch addiction from the entirety of middle school. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I hate that game with passion. But everything aside from the battle pass and canceling the story mode that the entire reason the game existed for. Don't even get good me moves. started. Good moves. Oh good my moves. God, like, that still pushes like, me I think, I think that game, I think Overwatch has the potential to go into a more positive direction. And I think gaming has the potential to go into a positive direction. Because at this point, it's a juggernaut. It's not going anywhere. It's not like no. comics where we're always scared about if it's going somewhere or not. Yeah. <laughs> Which... Uh, the comic saying scares me every time, every quarter. I'm like, yeah. But when every it comes single to like, time they reboot, bro, it's fucking t- times. Times running. <laughs> yeah. And with gaming, it's like I know it's not going anywhere, but it could be so much bigger than it is. But at the same time, it can handle a lot of stuff better. But I think it's I felt like take, it was it I was really on think... route to be massive, and then it was just this turn to just do everything speed run esports. Yeah. Quite literally. And I, and I they think put, they put too much money into it too fast. Yeah. And what's in gonna the wrong happen? Places. 
Because half, half of the money that they were putting into it literally went back to the investors, not the players. True. And what's going to happen is that AAA, AAA games, if we can even talk to play no more, because AAA kind of is weird in terms of it existing. But like, yeah. AAA games are going to have to take a hit before we actually get back to like the traditional format of how things go. And matter of fact, I did see single player just needs to single player and some in again well, like we said earlier indie stuff just needs to be more of a focus for now especially because yeah. in the fact that like a lot of stuff that's how it's being handled it's i just feel like anything weird. that's not exclusive needs to take a backseat because the exclusive games are doing great like there's xbox that had high fry yeah, rush and then there's like playstation an creative direction unlike most just normal ass games yeah Actually, you make a good point. I think exclusives, exclusives are like weirdly safe from that. Like the exclusives yeah. still feel AAA, and then you have Nintendo, which is it's Nintendo. Nintendo. Still Nintendo. It's a Nintendo. Yeah. It's the the Kendrick of gaming. So, <laughs> that, I, I don't know about that, <laughs> that one. That's a, I would that's say a the statement. Kanye of gaming. I would say the Kanye yeah. of gaming. You can rely, you can rely on him being able to fucking like drop something good. I but mean, and then they turn around and do stuff. Good company and or person, not a fucking chance. Yeah, because I they they do some good shit like, like Splatoon like tournaments, and then there's Mario games, and then and they turn around and those... do some stuff about those tournaments. And Nintendo's like, huh, no, no, no. Yeah, and those Splatoon <laughs> tournaments just so happen to run on fucking PS2 hardware. I mean, in a... <laughs> I like, mean, no, they, they are like... Nintendo are scammers through and through. I mean, in the sense of, like, their quality control is pretty solid. Yeah, I can see that. There's never really any... You never see anything about bugs in, like, Mario games whenever they come out. Or... I don't, I don't, well, Pokemon is its own thing. I'll show Oh, it. yeah, po Pokemon... Jeez. Pokemon's yeah, in a that's, weird place. That's, that's all that's Game Nintendo. Freak, not actually, like, in-house Nintendo. Yeah. But, like, when we're talking about, like, our Zeldas, the Metroid, Mario, even sub even sub-series that come out of that Splatoon quality Fire control... Emblem. Fire Emblem quality yeah, control has been pretty cash solid. So like, I can't necessarily say Nintendo is flopping in that sense. It's just like no. how they handle their people. And even then, the reason why I would say, the reason why I would put it closer to Kendrick is because of that quality control. Like the same way I can say Kendrick has like a very, like very solid discography where I don't really hate anything. I could also kind of say the same thing about anything that has that official Nintendo seal that isn't third party. Yeah, and even technically some of their yeah. and even because even like the their biggest flop of recent was something that's technically third party if you look at it because that would be like bayonetta 3. yeah so like yeah, it's yeah i can like, see it that so disappointing god and Man. my last thing for today um which would be well basically it's just gonna be centered around um how do i put it Who is, is, is me presenting a question. Who is a artist that hasn't dropped that you need to see a drop from very soon? Ooh. You know what? Let me see. And I can give you, I'll give you a year range for said drop. Cause like the, the, the fucking, the hard part is like half of the ones I would want are dead. <laughs> Damn, that's real. Holy shit. <laughs> I feel like that's a hard question for me. Cause the phase I'm in right now, it's like, these K-pop artists are like in a phase, like in a thing where they don't know when to not drop. <laughs> like, oh yeah, they're 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 cranking. Like it's like every like half a year, it's like oh, get ready for another mini album, bro. What? Man, it's getting, it's getting and also, like a lot like of the it. stuff I'm listening to is still pretty recent. <laughs> I might yeah. hop on. I'm, I might hop on there checking stuff out, or like checking even more stuff out from K-pop train. But honestly, um, I would the reason I prompted this is because I've been wanting two particular drops mm -hmm. really badly. I've been wanting another Billy drop. And to be honest, if let me check, let me check, let me check to make sure I'm not wrong. Because if she did drop, I'm gonna be very sad that I didn't catch this. Damn. I would say Tyler, but he did release like the estate sale version of so yeah. I don't yeah. And that's well, I have a drop that was like a solid five or six new tracks. Yeah, that's that was right album. there. Yeah. I have an album I gotta check out apparently later. Cause she did Oh she it. did oh no way. <laughs> well no not not uh not Billy, Georgia Smith. That was oh. one of the artists I was really looking forward to uh having another drop and I need to check that out like now apparently. 
So like, you know, I know what you're doing after this recording. Oh, word. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's literally, that's literally the plan. Um, I think that covers everything here. Mostly today was gonna or, be like I said, the Spotify rap. My my pick for someone who needs to drop is fucking anderson and knowledge y'all need to drop no worries like oh, right now this boy the, the year need is about to be over bro you're, you're not you've only dropped it. two singles please you're not getting it this bro you're this boy Pac really need to drop something like oh my god i, I get really, you I, I get you're still like swimming in the bread from all the silk sonic stuff i was but gonna say my he's bro. still doing fucking like dj Wee sets with his fucking like goofy ass <laughs> wig <laughs> Bro, that is a shit. phase. That was like a phase I was not expecting. <laughs> yeah. How do we did, did we finish the Andre album? How do we feel about the Andre album? It was good. High quality. I just haven't had time that, to that, listen that to it That man was yet. just fucking fluting around. I, I don't know what other way to say it. <laughs> fluting <laughs> around. All I've seen is memes of you, POV. You listen to the Andre album and it's just some dude calm as hell, just relaxed on the chair. I'm like, yeah, Damn. bro. Like that. 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 <laughs> That album is literally just the key to enlightenment. It's the best. I'm awake, but I'm sleep music. And yeah. that's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, I still like, need to I'm listen up. to it. I haven't had time to listen to it yet. I need to make time for it. So yeah, I think... But yeah, I'm, I'm just... Cause yeah, like, I think that's the only person I want a drop from that isn't fucking dead or cancelled. So you're, so you're getting... <laughs> <laughs> so that that's your drop gonna, choice yeah yeah I, I i want billy but what prompted this is because the, it, it's a crazy way to think about the albums but hair color and also cardi dropping but i'm a cardi fan i always want cardi to drop Fair. <laughs> um we i saw another hair color lot of red is still so, good but goddamn hair color actually, change actually yeah that goes into that goes into it oh um, billy changed her hair to like black and red so i was like Ah, uh, that drop might be coming up. So. Oh, new era incoming. Yeah, I feel like that. I feel like the hair color is just a, just a good way to tell at this point. Because <laughs> like, and I want to see like, I want to see if it would be very different from the blonde era or not. Because it's closer to like the uh, when we all fall asleep era, like in terms of looks. Yeah, uh, it's just a, she's got that hex hex girls type beat hair. Not the hex hex girls, girls is <laughs> crazy. Wait, I gotta see now. Wait. <laughs> Check it out. Oh my god, that was a perfect description. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like I'm I feel like a darker project is coming out again. Which I don't know what happened, but I feel like we're going dark. I'm for that. I mean that is the shit that I really like from Billy, so and for me. I it's crazy because the more I sit on it, the more I think happier than ever is probably her best project. Objectively, I feel like it is. I can agree on that. But I could also say when we all fall like, asleep. I, I, I own Happier Than Ever. I don't own Where Do We Fall Asleep. <laughs> I feel like Where Do We Fall Asleep has some of her best singles. Yes. If you're not listening I mean, to it, it in an album up. sitting, I could, yeah, just like specific singles. But as Which a whole like, package. But I still think her best song is it. Her, her best song is in, on a album, ironically enough. Because <laughs> you would be surprised, like, if you, like, if you think about it, like, Lovely isn't on a album. <laughs> yeah. And that's wild to be still. But, like, yeah, I think that, I think that does cover everything for first GXP. So, like, in terms of like when we're going to be uploading, we're gonna to try to keep to a weekly schedule. If something happens, something happens. But I'll keep, also, I'll make sure to keep people updated on like the community tab whether if if it, there's gonna be an episode that week or not, or something happened and it's a little late by like a day or so. And I will also say, in terms of, for like I said, you're not for this is since this is Chris's channel, um, at the current moment. You're not used to seeing me, so you could find me at literally Melody Ghost. And I also have a smaller channel that's just called Ghost. <laughs> and I'll probably try to see if I can get some links posted in said description for this podcast episode. Yep. And if 
Mm-hmm. And you can either find me like making random stuff. I'm probably trying to get to like getting into editorials and stuff like that as well. When I'm not doing this, when I'm not doing this, D and D content will be coming, and also random streams. Sometimes mute, sometimes not mute. I'm trying to get better, at not bat being mute all the time. But it, eh. We're trying to and, break them out of their shell a little bit, slowly. Yeah. Which is why I was partially Good old forced old fashioned to... generalized anxiety. Which is why I was partially forced to host, but we're not going to talk about it. As we'll, for... we'll rotate hosting, but it felt right you do the first episode. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, because I feel for... like I could slot right in, but yeah. <laughs> true, true. As for um, CJ, if that one will do the thing. What, just plugs? Future, yeah. maybe part-time, full-time streamer coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one. Yeah, I'm know, starting I know. school soon. <laughs> if anything, I might be a part-time intern editing for one of these motherfuckers. But Damn. Yeah, aside from here, nah. My Fair work enough. here is done. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I guess we gotta close out the episode now. I don't know where he yeah. went. <laughs> In that case, see ya. Thank y'all for watching. See you next week. Uh.